Welcome to Two Stroke Diagnostics. This lesson demonstrates a procedure for performing the primary compression test and crank case vacuum test. All lessons are taken from the Advanced Sequential Troubleshooting Worksheet provided as a service schools. This lesson will cover Section O Primary Compression Test. Line 1 holds a minimum of 3 to 4 psi for 3 to 4 minutes. Many more details will be provided during the video. This checks gasket and surface integrity and checks oil seals and fittings. A leaking crankcase is a recipe for disaster. So what is primary compression? Whenever I say primary compression, many, many people think it involves this compression tester. This compression tester is for secondary compression up here above the piston where it's all compressed nice and tight that's why you get the high pressure readings. Sometimes primary compression test is referred to as a leak down test. Some people automatically think of using this high pressure leak down tester. This is for four stroke engines and can damage your two stroke. You can pop seals, blow gaskets, you can create more problems than you care to have. The primary compression area is below the piston, the bottom end of the crank case. These pulses do a lot of the work for the engine. Without them, the engine won't run. Unlike four-stroke engines, primary compression in the two-stroke performs critical tasks. It moves cooling and lubricating fuel mix into the engine crank case. It causes that fuel mix to move up to the combustion chambers. Those same pulses operate the fuel pump diaphragm that moves the fuel to the metering chamber of the carburetor. Whenever diagnosing a unit, be sure to perform the diagnostics worksheet in sequence prior to performing this procedure. Jumping straight to a primary compression test may only result in performing unnecessary testing, wasting diagnostic time. This test is done after other possible external issues are checked and confirmed to be okay spark plug good, fuel filter good, exhaust screen and port are clear, carb, tank and fuel line pressure tested good. This procedure must be done before the unit is disassembled. Customer complaints may include engine over revving. Be sure you have adjusted the carburetor by the emissions bulletin and the unit still over revs prior to performing this test. Engine seizure. Fuel mixing carb good, fuel filter inspected good, and all other fuel delivery systems have been checked and are in good condition. Engine rattles noisy. Prior to any disassembly of the cylinder or insulator block, perform this test. It may help you find the cause of the problem. Now we will install our pressure tester for the primary compression test. This is our unit. Remove the air filter for access to the carburetor. Remove the engine cover. This is important. Whenever you do this test, the engine must be at bottom dead center. In this case, you can see that I have the balance side of the rotor up, magnets are down. Magnets down, piston down. Failure to do this may make your test results worthless. Here I've loosened the carburetor and made it separation so you can see we're going to install our block off plate here. Here's our block off plate. Notice I put it between the insulator block and the gasket. This is our muffler. Notice I have the gap between the heat shield and the muffler. A smart man will put the heat shield out and put the block off plate behind the heat shield. This will have more of a tendency to leak this way than it will if you put it behind the heat shield, but it will work. Here we have it installed. You can see how it's set up. Now we're getting ready to install our test setup. This particular item I made myself, so you can make one if you want to, but we do have them available. Here's the part number. This is our test kit. We, we use to pressurize and pull vacuum on our equipment. Here is our test setup prior to doing any testing. Notice here I have a little split on mine set up so I can take it apart and put it together. I have this piece here, so if I need to go to a smaller barb or line I can, for the fuel line or pressure testing or tank testing, I can. It's quick and it's easy. 
Again, the piston must be at bottom dead center. You have to open the ports so you can pressurize the whole crankcase. For the next part of this video, we will perform the test as if there are no leaks in the crankcase. We will provide the specifications for each test. Remember, these are timed tests. Test 1. Pressurize the crankcase to the absolute maximum of 7 psi. The crankcase can lose 1 psi from 7 pounds to 6 pounds or less in the first minute. If it leaks more than 1 pound in the first minute, the unit fails a pressure test even if it holds 3 to 4 psi for the 3 to 4 minutes. You have to find and repair the leak before continuing. A unit may pass here but fail the vacuum test. Remember, 7 psi maximum. You guys that like to pump them up to 10, it's not a good feature. 7 psi. Test 2. Pressurize the crankcase to 4 psi. Crankcase must hold a minimum of 3 to 4 psi for 3 to 4 minutes. That means if you have a pressure drop, then once it hits 3 psi, it must hold that 3 psi for 3 minutes. If it leaks more than that, you have to find and repair the leak, then retest. Now we're going to prepare for our vacuum test. We're going to turn our pump knob to vacuum. Vacuum test. The unit may pass the pressure test and fail this test. Pull 7 inches of mercury on the crankcase. Remember our setup stayed the same. We haven't changed anything. It must hold 6 to 7 inches of mercury for 3 to 4 minutes. If there is a leak, it can leak down to 6 inches of mercury. Once it reaches that 6 inches of mercury, it must hold that 6 inches of mercury for 3 minutes. Here we have our 7, P uh, 7 inches of mercury on our pump. If it does not pass this test and the unit passed the pressure test, the seals must be replaced and the unit retested. No leaks is the easy part. Now let's talk about leaks. Here's our special tool used for leak detection, nothing more than nice soapy water. Always check your test setup for leaks before checking anything else. Remember, 7 psi max. First we're going to check our adapter. No leaks there. No leaks anywhere here, so that's good. Now we're going to check my connection in the middle. There's no leaks either place, so that's good. We're going to check here on this. No leaks. We're good. If your leak was not in your test setup, be sure to test the port block off plates prior to anything else. If they are leaking, tighten or adjust as needed. A good crankcase will hold 7 psi and 7 inches of mercury for long periods of time. If you have a leak and sometimes they'll be so massive you have to have pump the handle of the pressure pump in order to keep air going into the engine to blow your bubbles. You'll test here on the back side. You want to be sure to shoot behind this heat shield also. If that's good, you want to shoot around here. Look for leaks right around here. If that's good, our test setup was good. Let's start looking for engine leaks. Again, bottom dead center on the piston. Magnets up, piston up, magnets down, piston down. This is the counterweight on the rotor, so our piston is down. Very important point. If you don't do this, your test results won't be worth anything. 7 PSI may not push the piston off a of TDC. Okay, first place we're going to look is the insulator block. Always the insulator block. Generally that's where I found the majority of the leaks. Next is going to be our transfer ports. If you have them, both sides Next leak is going to be around the crankcase gasket. We're right there. It's easy to spot if it's around the bolts. This is important. Sometimes you'll have real tiny bubbles coming out of here. It'll be a slow leak. It may take a while for it to foam up. 
this may very well be an insulator block leak and not a cylinder gasket leak. Next place is going to be the seals. This is the front side seal by the rotor. You can set the engine on the recoil and spray your bubbly in there and look for leaks. On the recoil side, it's a little tough. You got to take off the recoil housing and spray your fluids down in here and look for leaks. Remember, this is the pressure side we're looking for. Vacuum side, you can't see it leaking. You can only know that it is leaking. If you haven't found any of your leaks by this point in time, it may be the crankcase gasket. Seldom happens, but it is possible. You'll have to remove the fuel tank, get it out of the way, and pressurize your crankcase uh, and spray your bubbly in there. In all cases, after you make your repair of the unit, retest the unit to ensure there are no leaks. This concludes this lesson. Please view our other two-stroke diagnostics videos.